to me, family camp is, is setting the conditions so that families can come and experience uh, the depth of love that they have for each other in their family and also to experience the support of other families and others in the community to, to have family life. We're going to be really late for school. I don't care. I don't that was very accurate. <laughs> that is, yeah. <laughs> You're there. There's a <laughs> Connection circle? Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? High fives? High fives? High fives? <laughs> nice. How was it with your brother? <laughs> it's okay, mother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's so fun. So I'm hearing a desire for some agreements. Actually, hearing a desire for alignment, reliability, safety, rest. Who can all agree they would like to have some basic agreements at camp that we are following? When we're creating a new community or we're gathering in a new space, even whether we're aware or not, this one's at the top. It's kind of at the top of the tier, and it's a little bit. Unseen, I think, often. How are we including not only others, but primarily ourselves? How are we including ourselves? How are we getting our own needs met? How are we accepting what it is that's coming up for us that we're really needing? And how are we helping to relay and create that for others? It's not a sense of what are you, what are you taking yet? Yeah, thanks, Katie. <laughs> I need some help understanding this because you pointed it out. It's the first yeah. time I've ever heard this. The empathy versus strategy, because I'm strategy. Yeah. If I hear a problem come out of anybody's mouth, I have to fix it. Yeah. And um, that's oh, been my like MO. It. And uh, so, so the strategy is wrong, right? I mean, I'm mm -hmm. th because I'm thinking strategy. I've got to fix this. If I don't fix this, right. then I can't. You know, there's other stuff. There's baggage, but but you're finding that's it's my not solution. Serving. Yeah. Well, maybe it has been serving and there's something that you want different. It has not been serving because yeah. here I am at nearly 46 and a 15 year marriage that is, it's miserable. I don't want to have another breath with this marriage and yet I cannot, I cannot let go of what I mean it's it's wrong I've got to make it go right I've got to come up with a strategy because it's my fault if the marriage fails and my two boys and blah 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 mm -hmm. and I want to be perfect and I want to be right and whatever what Marshall said it changed my life but I don't know how to have it be <clears throat> I don't know how to give it to my two beautiful boys because it's the only reason I'm here. Not here, but here as me now. It's only because of those two boys. And so I will do whatever I have to do. But I do want, I do want to have this list be, what are my needs? I don't even know. I, I know that I need to be healthy enough to take care of these boys until they're 18. That's my goal. That's like, okay, I will do that. But that's so... Ugh. Well, the intention I think when it started and what drew me was that we get to have a place as a family where we can connect with other families and a community that are all really trying to figure out how to do this parenting thing differently. The family is a unit that's part of a system that is broken pretty much in the United States and, and many other places. 
Um, it's become a very isolated and part of a bigger economic school and religious system. Most parents, two parents now have to be working and some of them are working all day long. Um, or if one's lucky enough to stay home, they're home alone with the kids while one parent is gone and then at night it's, you know, the routine of, of bedtime and dinner and getting the kids to brush their teeth and it can just be kind of a long, isolating, kind of relentless there's a lot of joy, but it's kind of lonely. It's really hard to raise families, I think, in this culture. This whole nuclear family. And there's such a high level of mobility. People don't have the web of support. People actually really do need each other, and their realization of that is profound. Do you still want to know how the MVC thing went? <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, I feel like I kind of got distracted. I was distracted. So we did this one thing where we stood, we all stood up and then thought of a judgment about yourself or about somebody else and then said that for a minute and then like noticed how that felt in our bodies and I still feel awful from saying that. Um, and then we had to think of, um, think of that judgment and turn it into something that you're needing? Was it more Does interactive than the other one was? Yeah. Damn it! No, but a single I think that you guys would all benefit from it. I wish I had gone. Whoa, I, didn't, I thought it was another lecture, which is no. why I didn't want to go, because I'm not about that. Um, so, for example, I judge myself a lot, so I thought of, um, you're not good enough for your, um, why, why couldn't, why can't you be better? And then turning that into, um, um, <clears throat> A need. Um, I would love to be my best. So I would love to something. Or um, somebody had, why is he so ignorant? And then turning that into, I would love for him to be more understanding or something like that. That was part of it. And then the other part was um, learning about what it actually, well, it's, ah, it's so difficult to explain MVC, guys. Just, just saying. Yeah. But learning how, you, ah, well, now I wish you guys would have come. I wish yeah. I had come. And then we would have like, a lot more interactive. The way we do this camp, we don't force anybody to learn NVC. Things arise in us. We call them needs. It's just the best word we've come up with so far. There's some kind of a, a energy that lives inside every human being. So it's a kind of a subjective thing. Some of it's obvious. You need food, water, shelter. But then there are things that we identify, the words we use are doorways into the experience, you know, identity, belonging. Love, beauty, truth, trust. Those are like spiritual needs. There are interdependent needs and they're very powerful motivators. You know, it's not just about NVC. The, the thing about NVC is it's not just about NVC. NVC is just a strategy to empower people to live creative lives. Creative lives, lives of contribution, because that's the funnest game in town. If I'm sitting down, I can't trip and hurt other people. And you can ask yourself, what is the funnest thing to do? Usually people will um, think of something they've done for someone without having to, without having to do it, without having being paid to do it, but just something they wanted to do out of the being inspired to do it. It's like the best feeling to feel our power to make life wonderful for people. Very important pieces is that we learn how to hold our needs, our universal needs, in a way that we can trust that the other one is seeing mine and I see theirs. And the whole consciousness is about moving away from right or wrong to that sweet place where we look at what's serving life. So like, <gasps> 
like womanly yeah. about being hairy too. Like I had a, I think it was last summer. I was just outside for like two months straight, and before that, I just decided not to shave at all. So I was like so hairy everywhere. And I was like, I'm a real woman. Can you tell me? what it is I did or said that's contributing to your well-being mm -hmm. in a specific sense of what's going to happen. Yeah, those seeds might be a lot of work just deep enough in the soil to sprout later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think my like, automatic response is, or has been in the past, to make a compliment back. Oh, and I found that when I do that, it's like, now it almost feels like a duty. How do I practice like, starting just to take it in and be like, oh wow, that was said with a lot of intention. How to, and yeah, how to trust that the gift of receiving is a contribution to yeah. the other side of the Yeah, when is it a gift and when is it just like a duty? I think the awkwardness is like, there is, it is an exchange. So then the question is, what's, what's your job? It's not. A, it's not like it's super clear. Mm -hmm. Nobody, you know, think about all the times you think something's beautiful but you don't say it out loud. Mm -hmm. Someone chose to say it out loud and that before it's like. But yes. In this space, we are able to see families and relationships transform in front of our eyes because there's such a well of. This is the plum over here. Support that people can have. That's the plum and I think sometimes people are really actually not used to and going, wow, you know, I don't have to do this alone. Oh, I can ask. I can actually ask for help. Um, I had one couple tell me that they have been together for 11 years, 24 seven, and they just experienced in a session a 45 minute honeymoon. Because they haven't, they haven't had the time to sit down and really be present to each other. Or other families, they go home with a toolkit where they just go, oh my God, you know, I thought there was something wrong with my child. No. Your child just wants to be heard and seen and understood and this is how you can do that. And all of a sudden you have this cooperative child in front of you that, um, that you didn't that you were longing for to have but didn't know how to how to reach for it. Yeah. Is salad look at all appealing? Should we put our masks on? Let's put our masks on and have a conversation with these people who make. We're hungry! We're hungry! Are you gonna make a salad? Yeah. Spaces for them to occupy. Um, uh, heat everything by using geothermal energy from the earth. And we have a little hydroelectric dam that gives us the electricity. Um, and it's clothing optional for soaking. It's just like, and it's no thing. Yeah. It's just really simple yeah. and not strange at all. Right. Okay, yeah, you'll find it, you'll find soap. And they might have soap. Well, my name is Mike Yates, and I'm the official dishwasher. It's a way that I can serve here. And I just love the mission of the can. And so if I can help in any way, it's my pleasure. <laughs> to foster um, nonviolent uh, communication and to practice it over a week, um, particularly in families and young children. Um, I try to practice it. I've been trying to do so for many years and then, you know, then I get into a situation where it just goes right out the window and I try again. And that's had a huge impact on my life. I find the world a much less dangerous place uh, than I used to. It's been huge for me. I, I, um, 
I didn't perceive as much love in the world as I do now. And um, so from going from, and I guess it's just a product of my youth and upbringing, childhood, what have you, where I thought it was a dangerous place, I thought the world was out to get me, to where I now think that the world wishes me well, at the very least. There's a lot of role modeling that goes on like, that's just uh, embedded into the culture. So not only get the parents, do the parents get a lot of education here um, and possibilities and opportunities for help, but they also at the same time see how the staff is interacting with the children. Uh, the children get a different way of, potentially different way than what they're used to, of how to be with each other. And they learn it through osmosis almost. Never can die. Stars can never die. Yeah. And this is a real flower. Mm -hmm. Real flowers can never die. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought your name was Donna, but it's Dana? No. Donna? I'm not sure. What? What's your name? You can't say it. Call me Donna. You don't speak Hebrew. Oh, so it's a special pronunciation. He, he's Donna. She's Donna. Mm -hmm. That's what she wants us to call her. Because we probably couldn't get her name right. Yeah, don't, don't, don't say Dana. Don't say Dana. You like Donna better. Yeah, I don't like Dana. Mm -hmm. Your name. <laughs> Some people call me Alara. But my name's Alara. I don't like Alara. I know, same letters, but sounds different. I don't like it. So, who is that? There's one that has a golden apple Everybody calls me Dana. Oh, sounds like that's not fun for you. <laughs> I think we can do that. Are you willing to do that to call her Donna? Yeah. yeah. How long have you been doing in VC? <laughs> um, I've been practicing it through myself. Um, maybe three years, but then before that it was just a part of what my mom brought to our family. It wasn't something that I practiced or, you know, read about or, um, did a one-on-one -on -one interaction with. It was just exposure and immersion into the way that she chose to lead her life with us. So, I don't know. Did you have this moment where you felt like you wanted to actually like learn it from the... I did have one of those moments, yeah. Can you yeah, it was here. Can you describe it for me? Ooh. It was very primal, instinctual, like full body, kind of contraction almost of clarity there was a longing for more information like here's this culture in this world that I've grown up in and around and I know it but what's it all about there are 
And I think with children, it's a lot less talk. Words be actions instead of sounds. Because NVC is a lot of talking and sharing and getting clear and concise on what's going on inside. There are so many levels of what's going on inside that there's so much to say. So like as I look at that right now, Axel playing with the kids, um, so and they're just like hanging all over him, but he's happy and he's wanting to be there and they're wanting to be there. And so I think right now what's happening for them is an assurance that they're equal and held with the same importance as those that they look up to. And their bodies are changing and there's so much happening so quickly. There's a lot of confusion. And I think NVC can come in really handy with shepherding that and really holding that and celebrating it instead of just kind of ignoring it and saying like this is what happens, you know. Like but celebrating it. It's a language in and of itself. You have to learn a new language. Like any other language around the world. I think NVC is a language and not only with others but totally with yourself. Like I speak to myself differently when I'm choosing to use an NVC format. And there are times where you fall in and out of love with it. And there are the struggles and, you know. And then those moments that are just so pure and wonderful. Can you dry your hands with the towel? Yeah. It's like the main member that I work with. Do we get the tops? Do you like that back? <laughs> Are you waiting? Well, we're kind of getting an idea of empathy. What is empathy not? Because sometimes it's helpful to actually define the other emotions. Um, one up the yeah, see, you guys already know this. These are some uh, ways that we often respond. Okay, so let's think, uh, what's a, something that you would say that you would want to have uh, maybe some understanding or empathy or clarity about anything like what's something you might say where um, and we'll practice these other responses first and see how that goes what's, what's mm -hmm. something that you sometimes say and then they're like Ugh, and you don't get maybe what you want back when you say it could be anything i'm really stressed i'm really stressed okay let's go through each one okay let's say i'm really stressed and what would i think you should do something about it Okay, see how that lands. <laughs> how is that? It's <laughs> kind of vague. Oh, okay. oh, it's not just, that bad. Just <laughs> it'll get better sometime up. soon. You see, I'm happy. You yeah, it's a great day. Look <laughs> at how beautiful it is. You're just spread the love. Oh, <laughs> I'll have you drop. Let's not talk about your issues and let's go get ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's my. Uh, <laughs> and again, I'm yeah, not I'm saying these are wrong. It's just we're we're testing it out. We're just seeing how. Well, nothing is like never the answer, honestly. Yeah. yeah. For empathy. No. Yes. I got hit by a car. Oh yeah. Hit <laughs> 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 a truck. I don't have to die. Yeah. I mean. I mean. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's do yours. Can you do yours again? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so stressed. Oh, when did this happen? <laughs> <laughs> do you want an Advil? <laughs> Yeah, Do you want some food, some water, a hot pack, <laughs> <laughs> a bath? <laughs> I can go run to the Where's store and get some milk. My mom does this. <laughs> and what we're going to do is guess feelings and needs and slowly we're not going to barrage her in a thing of paintball oh, needs coming at you, right? Mm. But slowly, so <laughs> if somebody says that maybe each of us can make a, a feelings and needs guess when she says that as a practice. Mm -hmm. okay. um, yeah. do, you, do you have a need for um, safety, maybe? Mm -hmm. 
reassurance. Mm -hmm. okay. Anybody else who wants to try it out? Do you want to, Michael? Do you have a need for care? Mm. Yeah, and sometimes you just go right to the need. Because yeah. sometimes feelings aren't really something. Stressed is the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's learned, yeah. Really not on the list. Yeah, Overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you want to try it all? Guessing like another feeling you need that might be connected with the stress, or you can go to a need. Maybe some rest. Mm -hmm. Some rest. Mm -hmm. Mm. It's kind of a weird one, but do you have a need for healing? Yeah. Maybe. Knowing we matter and unconditional love is like the core wounding we have and what we, what we a lot of times, a lot of us seek. And then we have children and that that hasn't been looked at and then it impacts. Um, and I think a lot of us want to make sure in some ways we can contribute as much as we can that our children won't repeat that and though, and yet we all may. <laughs> um, yeah, it seems to be a huge core need for everyone to know they matter no matter what and that they're valued and they're loved and that you have that sense of love for yourself. And this to me is a process that has that built in. That's what I love about it. It's not just some communication tool. It actually has self-compassion as a, as a base and then my children learn how to have compassion for themselves, which is almost it is paramount if you're going to be able to empathize with someone else. And I get to learn how to speak my honesty and hold my needs just as dear, which often, you know, they've been pushed away. Yeah. It's almost like you have to understand all of the other needs and understand needs until you get to the point where you're like, what we're really longing for is yeah. that, that I have like a, an importance or I have Mm -hmm. My impact is seen, you know, it's not like a tree falls and no one hears it. Yeah. It's like a tree falls and, and it's <laughs> fallen. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of times we have all these other needs that are like gateway needs too. And that's at the core. But I got to start somewhere. No, I really want order and consideration and efficiency. And then it gets care and consideration. And then I'm getting closer and closer to that being underneath. I guess, is it strange that children sometimes feel like they don't matter to their parents, or it's that structure of a punishment that makes it feel like they don't? Yeah, I think there's so much that has contributed punishment and, and reward, because right there, that's external. You have to do something to get my love, or if you do something, I take it, in a sense, away, or you... Because underneath the punishment is kind of always, you're wrong. And just hearing that becomes our internal message. So that system, I think, alone. And then I think we're wired for it. There's so much about that that I've learned. Um, but just that, why, why children get the sense of not mattering comes from the domination systems of parenting that we've kind of handed down. And it's just wiring as a human. We're wired to see what's wrong. So if in the very beginning somebody says, oh, that's hot, and you're one, and, and all you hear is, no, no, don't touch, right there, oh, I'm wrong, I messed up, you know, I shouldn't have done that. It actually can, I guess it's, I've heard it's innate, that that is that we immediately assume that it's our fault, and then we go from there. So, oh, I messed up, so I must not have value, and I'm going to be kicked out of the tribe, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's sad to even think about that.
and it's a song not like uh, any other song. <coughs> it all starts with uh, my mentor John Young, who he went into a park in around Santa Barbara, and he received a ceremony there to deal with the grief. He was doing a nature and music workshop and he was sent on a sea spot to receive a song from nature. And he went to bury himself inside the elderberry tree. <coughs> and he received that song from the elderberry tree. He said, you can't know that song, I never played it to anybody yet. I just received from an elderberry tree. <laughs> so, and, and he asked Kerry to play that part. And he saw that those two parts were matching each other. The woman on one side, the man on the other side, and they started to sing. <coughs> and that song lasted for maybe one half hour. They could not stop. And by the end, everybody was crying. And nobody understood why. And so the song is called the Elderberry Song. And it seems to create this miracle of healing the relationship between the feminine and the masculine. <coughs> So that's what we can try to do right now. <coughs> <coughs> Elderberry tree just in the corner there, and there's another one on that head there. Mm -hmm. And something that I forgot to <coughs> add is that uh, I've been asked by both the people by which this song came that uh, we share it only if we tell the story. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so if you ever want to share it to somebody else, tell the story. Mm -hmm. At least what you can remember. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.